And thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a Bangor man arrested after he allegedly fired a gun inside his apartment during an argument made his first court appearance this afternoon. 35-year-old Fox Maloney is charged with reckless conduct, criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon, and disorderly conduct. Bangor police officers responded to 68 Jefferson Street for a report of two men arguing just after 2 a.m. on Saturday. The caller reported hearing what sounded like a gunshot. When officers arrived, they found Maloney and his roommate had been arguing, and one had refused to leave the other's room. Maloney allegedly displayed a handgun and fired within the apartment. No one was injured. During court proceedings today, lawyers said the bullet was lodged in a wall. Maloney's bail has been set at $5,000. A woman sitting near Thunder Hole in Acadia National Park was swept into the ocean on Saturday afternoon. The young woman was watching the action there at Thunder Hole when a large swell came in and pulled her into the water. Officer in charge Jared Kushla of the United States Coast Guard says their unit at Southwest Harbor was quickly deployed and was able to rescue the woman approximately 300 feet offshore. She was transferred to EMS in Bar Harbor for first aid. No injuries were reported. Well, former Governor Paula Page is accusing Governor Janet Mills of being dishonest about her support for the sappy mill and its workers. At a press conference earlier this afternoon, LePage accused Mills of forcing the removal of the Shawmut Dam through regulatory means, calling it a backroom deal. He said it would endanger 750 jobs to reach 99 percent survival rate for fish passing through the dam. Her administration is openly plotting the removal of the dam, resulting in the subsequent closing of the Sappy Mill, an absolute economic disaster for the state of Maine. Meanwhile, a statement from Deputy Commissioner David Medor with the Maine Department of Marine Resources said in part, quote, DEP is required under the Clean Water Act to act on applications for water quality certifications within one year of their submission. In order to ensure any water quality certification by the state for the Shawmut hydroelectric project includes the full range of information from the federal evaluation, including the most up-to-date science, the Maine DEP has drafted a Denial without prejudice of Brookfield's October 18th, 2021 water quality merits application. He went on to say, quote, a denial without prejudice would not change current operational requirements for the dam, nor would it require removal of the dam as asserted by some commenters. Brookfield would need to file a new WQC application with the department to continue with the federal licensing process, end quote. Mills and LePage are facing off in the race for Maine's governor. The Bangor School Department began a new diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging collaborative with the University of Maine today. The first course of the partnership took place at 4 p.m. at the James F. Dowdy School. Prior to the class, representatives from UMaine's Department of Education and Human Development joined Bangor School Department officials to discuss the partnership and answer questions. Superintendent of Bangor Schools, James Tager, says the partnership will provide important training for educators in the Bangor School Department. With the guidance of the University of Maine, the Bangor School Department is building a learning community of educators in primary through higher education. We look forward to combining their diverse practices identities and approaches to this work with the shared goal of building a caring, inclusive and equity driven educational experience for everyone in our schools. Educators from each of Bangor schools will take part in the three collaborative training courses. Hudson University hosted an exhibit to educate visitors about the possible warning signs that a teen could be using drugs. Our Matthew Jaronsek has the story. I'm here at the opioid overdose trial at Huston University, and as you can see right behind me, students are learning about the early signs of opioid abuse. Members of the Huston community had the opportunity to learn how to identify signs that someone could be suffering from substance abuse disorder. Students who took part found themselves in a replica of a teenager's bedroom where a Code 3 instructor showed possible spots and signs of hidden drugs. With Hudson University's Director of Experimental Learning, Dr. Peter McLean, saying that this year is going to outpace 2021, the university is looking to increase public awareness surrounding signs of drug use. Statistically, again, the state has come out with new statistics showing that we're having more overdoses than ever. 
So prevention, education, anything we can do to help um, prevent people or help them get help uh, from using opiates is, is really important. The death toll just keeps climbing. According to Maine Drug Data Hub, Maine had a total of 641 fatal overdoses and 4,448 non-fatal overdoses in 2021. Code 3 Executive Director Joseph Abdallah says it's important for college students to know the dangers of buying drugs illegally. A lot of the opioid counterfeit pills are targeted at college students because they are disguised now as Xanax and Adderall, very common medications taken by kids in college, and a lot of the counterfeit pills are disguised as those, and they are actually opiates. Code 3 is a nonprofit organization that helps to create trust between police departments and the communities they serve. For junior pharmacy major Olivia Moody, it was the little details that took her by surprise. We recognize like the needles and things like that that we see in the pharmacy, but you don't see the things like the Ziploc bags, the top of the bags and things like that. Just little tiny signs that you wouldn't normally recognize. She says knowing what to do when someone overdoses is a basic skill that everyone needs to understand and recognize. It's just super important for us as pharmacy students to be able to like recognize, especially like opioid overdosing and things like that. It's stuff that we should be able to recognize in the pharmacy all the time. Um, so just definitely like creating awareness for things. Reporting from Bangor, Matthew Jaronsic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Meanwhile, a new school in Sullivan was supposed to open today. However, the opening of the Charles M. Sumner Learning Campus has yet again been delayed. In a letter to parents, Superintendent Michael Eastman said they got the certifi certificate of occupancy inspection results, and there were a number of issues that had to be addressed before staff could even get into the building. He said the earliest that could happen was today. Then teachers would need a couple days to get their classrooms set up. The new opening day is now slated for Wednesday. Eastman said while the delay is beyond their control, he believes it will be well worth the wait. Well, gas prices in Maine continue their downward trend. They fell another nine cents a gallon in the past week. According to Gas Buddy's survey of 1,200 stations around the state, the average price is now 300, or 300, yikes, $3.76 a gallon. Excuse me. That's 54 cents a gallon lower than a month ago, but still 65 cents a gallon higher than a year ago. Meanwhile, the lower pedestrian bridge under the Willard Ore Bridge in Bangor is closed. City officials say work began today to fix some problems engineers found while they were inspecting it. They found the structural components were in decent shape, but the bridge deck was certainly, I mean, if you take a look at it, you can see it's all cracked and shattered. Um, and then the bridge rail itself wasn't in great shape. Terry Old says depending on the price, the city might upgrade the rail to match the rail on the upper bridge. They're hoping to have the project wrapped up this fall, but says there could be some delays if they do decide to upgrade the rail. And overall, a very nice summery feeling day to get out yeah. and about, uh, do some walking, do some driving. So yeah. really no complaints on our end. Absolutely no complaints, and hopefully there is more of it to come. Mm -hmm. And with answers on that, let's take a first look at our forecast with Jeff Weller. All right, Beth, thank you. Happy Monday. Your first weather is brought to you by Kings Mountain RC. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this, right? 84 here in Bangor today, 80 Bar Harbor, 79 Millinocket. Uh, this is not normal. The average high is in the low 70s, but tomorrow will be a bit cooler as we have some more clouds on the way and also some rain showers are on the way. Right back over here, uh, a little system kind of headed our direction. That will bring us some light rain showers tomorrow, pretty much ending tomorrow night. And then we're nice again for Wednesday into Thursday. Our forecast and tonight, though, is increasing clouds. There might be a sprinkle in there with low temperatures down near 60. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All right, so more details to come on that. And in the meantime, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Acadia National Park says this year's visitation numbers are way up and set to be the second highest in park's history. And the Women's Military Memorial outside of Arlington National Cemetery is getting ready to celebrate its silver anniversary. We'll have those stories and much more after this. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy and better sleep with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. 
The Furniture Gallery is celebrating Labor Day. Thank you to those who continue to work hard every day. It's your time to kick back and relax in a new recliner. Save 10% on our entire recliner selection. After a long day at work, you deserve a great night's sleep. The Furniture Gallery is offering a free bundle with any Simmons Harmony Lux, Serta Eye Comfort, and Serta Perfect Sleeper mattress purchase. Special financing is available. Support our main family-owned business. The Furniture Gallery, Augusta, Bangor, Gorham, Newport, and North Windham. Autumn of Life Home Care is a great place to work. The team here provided me with all the opportunities and experience necessary to grow within the company, all while working around my busy college schedule. They provided all the necessary licensing and training. It truly was the job that kickstarted my career. Autumn of Life Home Care in Brewer is a licensed agency with personal support specialists. Let our compassionate, reliable, considerate caregivers make your life a little easier by providing assistance for you or your loved one. Autumn of Life Home Care, we focus on you. Apply today. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. ACM Honors. Love y'all. A tribute to country music's biggest stars. This feels like a miracle. An all new special, Tuesday on Fox. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy and better sleep with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. Coming up on Good Morning Maine, we will have all the latest local news, including an update about the construction of the footbridge in Bangor, plus an update about Acadia National Park. We'll hear from meteorologist Evan Biggs with our radar weather forecast to prepare you for the rest of your week. This and more on Good Morning Maine. Welcome back, everybody. The Acadia National Park Advisory Commission says major construction projects are moving along quickly, and this year's visitation numbers are shaping up to be the second highest in the park's history. It was the Advisory Commission's first in-person meeting since February of 2020, though some participated virtually. According to officials, major projects are moving right along. They said the improvements to the Duck Brook Bridge, which rests in between the Visitor Center and Route 233, is almost... Are, are almost complete, rather. Construction is also expected to start in November on a project to replace the culverts on Cadillac Mountain Road. Officials say there could be intermittent closures to the road during that project. Bidding for the maintenance building improvement project closes Wednesday, and bids for the Scudic Wastewater Rehabilitation Project are being evaluated. In addition to updating progress on construction and improvement projects, Park Superintendent Kevin Schneider says the park continues to struggle with staffing, due at least in part to a lack of housing. Uh, this summer, we wanted to hire 165 summer seasonals. That was our target, uh, approximately. We only hired 116, and so we were short-staffed. You know, we and, and a big part of that is employee housing. Uh, you know, a hiring manager may have say they want to fill 20 positions, but they only have 10 beds. When it comes to position number 11, where you don't have housing, it becomes almost impossible for someone to take that job unless they you know, happen to have a, a family member or, or live in the area. And so that's really a challenge for us. Schneider also reported that this year is shaping up to be a great one when it comes to visitation, the second busiest year for visitation in the history of the park, though official numbers are not in just yet. Last year was the park's busiest year on record. The city of Bangor has hosted a number of car shows the last few weekends. That trend continued in Brewer yesterday. More than 200 cars showed up in the Twin City Plaza on State Street for the 15th annual Brewer Days car show. Everything from Mustangs to Mopars, Camaros and street rods attracted the attention of spectators. Trophies were handed out to first, second and third place winners in each category. Organizer Teresa Mayberry says the Brewer Days car show takes the best aspects of other area car shows and rolls them into a single event. First place trophies are one of a kind, scout made with parts and pieces of cars and wrenches and whatever. It's a lot of work. There's, you know, several years, some cars to 
take something out of nothing and, uh, and bring it all back. But in the end, it's really rewarding. All proceeds from yesterday's car show benefit the Brewer Boy Scouts Troop 15 to help them pay for their activities and scouting camp. Well, the Women's Military Memorial just outside of Arlington National Cemetery is getting ready to celebrate its silver anniversary. The monument is dedicated to women who have served our country, many of whom are from Maine. Our Jody Hersey has more. We want women to share their stories with the world, with America, so that their stories are not forgotten. The service and sacrifice that they uh, did for our country, for our freedom, is important to be recorded in history. Thankfully, the Military Women's Memorial in Washington, D.C. has been the location of where thousands of women in uniform can register and record their years of service so that their contributions are never overlooked. Lieutenant Colonel Jolene Brown has been with the Maine Air National Guard for 22 years. She says the memorial is a great way to honor women in uniform. And we don't serve to be recognized, but I think it's important that others do recognize the impact that women have in defense of the homeland and serving our country. It takes just moments for female veterans to document their military service at womensmemorial.org. It didn't take very long, and the time that it did take, I think, has significant value uh, looking back for future generations. No matter what you've done, if you've been in combat, not in combat, uh, you've served stateside your whole career, all of your stories are important. The 330 square foot Military Women's Memorial will mark its 25th anniversary in October. And memorial organizers say they'd like to raise $25,000 to celebrate that special milestone. All the money raised will help maintain and redesign the memorial, as well as fund the memorial's educational programs to ensure even more women are recognized for their service. In Bangor, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. Really just a beautiful memorial and such yeah. an important one as we recognize all those who uh, yeah. help defend our country. You know, you can't, you can't express your gratitude enough mm. for those who have served and are currently serving. Absolutely. All and right. still to come on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, lawyers for former President Trump say the criminal investigation into classified materials seized from his Florida home has spiraled out of control. And the Ukrainian army is making more gains against Russian forces, some of whom have been pushed all the way back to the border. All those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Interest rates are on the rise and making waves in the real estate market. Buying or selling? You need a navigator. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. Holly Taylor, dot Realtor. I earned my retirement. I worked over 40 years for it. But Bruce Poliquin doesn't get it. He's a Wall Street banker and congressman who took all that money from the drug and insurance industries, then voted for devastating cuts to Medicare and risking Social Security. Poliquin even supported raising the retirement age. Bruce Poliquin is all about corporations and multimillionaires like himself, not us. House Majority Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. Does your dream kitchen look like this? Or this? Or maybe you need a little more inspiration. Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings, so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 48 months, plus save up to $1,100. your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Here's this week's featured deal. 
great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials, with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground ground. Odland Road, Bangor. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available. Half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Homes are selling in a single day. The real work happens well before. I'm Holly Taylor, and I have the expertise to guide you through your home improvements. Come to the one who gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Former President Trump's legal team has filed a motion objecting to the government's candidates for special master. His lawyers say the criminal investigation into material seized from his Florida home has spiraled out of control. They want a judge to leave in place and order temporarily halting core aspects of the Justice Department probe. Fox's David Spunt tells us where things stand. Former President Donald Trump's attorneys out with a new filing, insisting some of the documents in question by the government may not be classified after all. On Monday, Trump's legal team filed a lengthy 21-page response to the government's argument that a third-party arbiter called a special master should have limited powers. Trump's team disagrees, calling the overall investigation a document storage dispute that has spiraled out of control. The filing states... The government wrongfully seeks to criminalize the possession by the 45th president of his own presidential and personal records. Trump landed at Dulles Airport in Northern Virginia on Sunday, prompting speculation on social media as to why he's in the area for only the second time since leaving office. Multiple sources close to the investigation deny the FBI planned to visit Trump's Northern Virginia golf club or meet with Trump himself. On social media, Trump announced he was working from the club on Monday. Federal prosecutors want District Judge Eileen Cannon to reconsider her ruling from last week, telling investigators to temporarily stop examining more than 100 classified government documents seized from Mar-a-Lago until a special master reviews them first. They wrote that Cannon's order could impede efforts to identify the existence of any additional classified records that are not being properly stored. They argue Cannon's order poses a potential for ongoing risk to national security. A Texas woman is facing criminal charges. She's accused of making threats against the judge presiding over this case. At the Justice Department, David Spunt, Fox News. Meanwhile, Illinois will be the first state in the nation to end cash bail starting next year. This means people charged with crimes like robbery, arson, and even kidnapping will be released essentially with just a promise to show up for trial. The law is called the Safe T Act, and critics say it will actually make people less safe. Fox's Greedy Trimble has more from Chicago. A number of state's attorneys and sheriffs are sounding the alarm about Illinois' plan to end cash bail. They say it's going to make crime in the state of Illinois worse. The new law that goes into effect January 1st, 2023, gets rid of cash bail entirely. It also limits who can be arrested and held in jail based on the crime they're alleged to have committed. The Democrats who voted for this law say it's more equitable. You've been denied a bond because you're dangerous, which is good. Let's deny dangerous people bonds. But if they have a bond, we're saying you're not dangerous. We're just going to keep you in jail because you're poor. But those in law enforcement who oppose it say it'll lead to hundreds, if not thousands of people being released from jail as soon as it goes into effect at the beginning of the year. They also say it'll make our communities more dangerous with suspects in future crimes roaming free. There is nothing just and there is nothing, you know, uh, promoting safety about allowing individuals who choose to break the law to threaten and to hurt innocent people, allow them back on the streets to do it again. There, there's, there, that's the opposite of justice. Um, and that's the opposite of promoting safety within our community. The new law comes at a time when major corporations are already leaving Chicago, some of them over safety concerns. Crime in the city of Chicago is up 37 percent in the last year. In Chicago, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. 
Meanwhile, the Ukrainian army is once again on the move, making more gains on Monday against Russian forces, some of whom have been pushed back all the way to the border. Fox's Jeff Paul has more from Kyiv. The Russians are on the move. Ukrainian troops retaking more territory on Monday after a weekend blitz that saw a major Russian retreat in the northeast. Ukrainian forces are now flying their flags at some border checkpoints Russia had controlled since the start of the war. Officials here say more than 20 towns and cities have been liberated in just the past 24 hours. And they have new reports that Russian forces are suffering a significant breakdown in morale. The enemy suffered significant losses in manpower. The rest of the servicemen have extremely low morale. Therefore, they massively refuse to return to the combat zone. But there are also growing concerns about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest, where the last reactor still online was shut down as fighting intensifies throughout the area. What we need here, really, is Ukraine and, and, and Russia to agree on a very simple uh, principle of non, not attacking or not shelling at the plant. Meanwhile, the Russians reportedly striking back against civilian targets in Ukraine's second biggest city, cutting off water and power to hundreds of thousands, with Vladimir Putin claiming the war is far from over. Russia is confidently handling the external pressure, essentially a financial and technological aggression coming from certain countries. The Russian pullback is also prompting rare criticism from Russian officials who believe Moscow is making mistakes in Ukraine. In Kyiv, Jeff Paul, Fox News. Well, student loan borrowers across the country could soon see up to $20,000 of their student loan debt forgiven. But it may come at a cost. Fox's Joy Addison has more. That cost is state tax on student loan forgiveness funds. And the law varies from state to state. But for now, seven states have confirmed that they do plan to apply that tax. We're still waiting to hear from many others. I was very relieved to hear that that relief was coming from the federal government. But former Mississippi State College student D. Stegall says that relief didn't last. Within 24 hours, those feelings get complicated because then you realize that um, depending on what state you're in, uh, Mississippi, you could potentially be paying taxes on that. Forgiven debt is taxed on your income tax return like it's money that you earned. Mississippi borrowers making less than $125,000 per year may have $10,000 of student loan debt forgiven and may owe an additional $500 in taxes. Pell grants are typically given to borrowers who need more help financially. They are eligible for $20,000 in student loan forgiveness and may owe an additional $1,000 in taxes. It feels in a lot of ways like a tax on being poor. So far, Mississippi, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Massachusetts, Arkansas, Indiana, and North Carolina say they plan to tax the student loan forgiveness funds. This map shows the states that won't tax forgiveness loans. So if you file in Virginia, Idaho, New York, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Kentucky, you're in the clear. Financial expert Steve Rode points out the amount taxed is small compared to the thousands of dollars being forgiven. If you're getting some student loan debt forgiven and you have to pay a little bit of tax, it's still a blessing. But Stegall says it feels like anything but. He notes the average college graduate in Mississippi makes under $40,000 a year. And according to ZipRecruiter, it's actually just over $32,000. It's difficult, you know, um, trying to make ends meet. Financial expert Steve Rode reminds us that it is still early in the student loan forgiveness process and these laws could change. In Jackson, Mississippi, Joy Addison, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the city of Brewer hosts over 200 unique cars at this year's Brewer Days Car Show. And in sports, Bain football dropped to 0-2 this weekend. We'll hear why head coach Jordan Stevens is optimistic, though, about what he saw on Saturday. We'll be right back. They came back to win the ultimate prize. America's next MasterChef is... The MasterChef Back to Win season finale, Wednesday on Fox.
Jared Golden promised to watch out for us, even campaigned as a fighter against Biden's reckless spending that he knew would make inflation worse. But three days later, Jared Golden cast a deciding vote for Biden's newest wasteful spending bill that experts say will hike taxes by billions on those making under $200,000. Maine families are already struggling too much on Jared Golden's watch. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Out with the old and in with the new. Check out Pat's Pizza Specials. Tuesdays, $5 spaghetti and meatballs. Tuesday, all day breadstick special. Wednesday, large one topping pizzas. $8. Wednesday, small steak and cheese with french fries. $6.25. Friday, fish with french fries. $7.50. Saturday, small one on a pizza fountain soda. $7.25. And you can still save some dough. Bring the family to the all new Pat's Pizza. 662 Main Road North, Hamden. Whether you're hurt by a box truck or by any commercial vehicle, you may have a big case worth big money if you've been hurt by any commercial truck. Call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial truck? Come out on top. Call the twos. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolodox with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. ABC 7, Fox 22, Two Old Golds Antiquities and Artisans, and Kings Mountain RC want to send you to see Five Finger Death Punch live in concert with special guests Megadeth, The Who, and Fire from the Gods, Saturday, September 17th at the Main Savings Amphitheater in Bangor. Sign up to win tickets by registering at Two Old Golds Antiquities and Artisans in Trenton and Kings Mountain RC in Brewer. Win tickets to see Five Finger Death Punch, September 17th on the Bangor Waterfront. It's your car, it's your SUV, it's your truck. Experience the pre-owned difference with a huge selection of over 500 used vehicles at Quirk Motor City Used Vehicle Center, 377 Hogan Road, Bangor. It's your car, find it at Quirk Motor City. Thousands coming out in Scotland's capital to pay their respects to the late Queen Elizabeth before she makes her way back to London tomorrow. Fox's Madeline Rivera gives us a look at the day's events. With heads bowed, King Charles and his three siblings standing vigil around their mother's coffin inside St. Giles Cathedral. Her Majesty's coffin making its way from Hollywood House Palace through the crowded streets of Edinburgh to the cathedral for a service of thanksgiving. It's lovely to see the family together and to see Her Majesty the Queen's at rest. The cathedral opening to the public following the service. Thousands waiting in line for hours to pay their respects to the Queen before her coffin travels back to London. Many overcome with emotion. Very sad. We know it's real, but when you see a coffin in there, it's, it comes home. The lines at Buckingham Palace are only getting longer ahead of the Queen's arrival on Tuesday. Her coffin is expected to stay here overnight before it travels in a public procession to Westminster Hall on Wednesday. Meanwhile, King Charles carrying on with his duties, visiting both the UK and Scottish parliaments. The new king addressing parliament for the first time as monarch. I am deeply grateful for the addresses of condolence by the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which so touchingly encompass what our late sovereign, my beloved mother, the Queen, meant to us all. Dozens of wildfires are burning land across the western U.S. Some states are now taking new steps to prevent flames from sparking. Fox's Chris DeMeo has more. Fire is pretty much a wild animal. We can't tame it. We can just try to control it and uh, extinguish it. Hundreds of firefighters are working around the clock to contain California's Mosquito Fire. It's the state's largest wildfire this year, scorching more than 41,000 acres near Sacramento. Fire crews say the flames are feeding off of dry brush located in steep terrain. In the evenings when the wind gets cooler, it actually comes downhill. It can push the fire downhill, which is atypical, and spread it in new directions. The Mosquito Fire is one of dozens burning out west. In Washington state, the Bolt Creek Fire has burned through 7,600 acres. 
FEMA has authorized funds to support firefighting efforts. The flames are threatening power lines, railways, and roads, putting multiple communities under evacuation orders. I got a message uh, from some neighbors that said I needed to come home and start packing up. I just got the things that were most precious to me, photos and my art. And in Oregon, nearly 50,000 homes and businesses had their power shut off this weekend. Portland General Electric made the decision as high winds threatened to down power lines and sparked new wildfires. It's not easy, but it is something that you have to look at, and uh, you don't have any choice about this, so you better do the best you can. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, wildfires burned more than 6.6 million acres in the U.S. this year. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. Just a really difficult situation yeah. out west for them. There's a lot of the country right now dealing with drought. Yeah, for sure. And I, know I have a number of friends on the west coast in the western states, and you just check in with them regularly to make sure everybody's okay right. and see how they're, they're faring and all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, always yeah. good to do if you have people out there checking on them. For sure. Well, Jeff Weller is in next with our full five days. Stay with us. Look what we did today. High temperatures back in the low to mid 80s. That's not normal. Tomorrow, things begin to change, though, and some more rains on the way. Those details for you coming up. We finally did it. Did right by every child in Maine. For the first time ever, Maine is paying its full share for pre-K through 12 education. We did it by putting politics aside and bringing Democrats, Republicans, and independents together to put our kids first. With more resources in the classroom, better pay for teachers, and property tax relief for homeowners. Fully supporting our kids. One more way Governor Mills puts Maine first. People with plaque psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis are rethinking the choices they make, like the splash they create, the way they exaggerate, or the surprises they initiate. Otesla, it's a choice you can make. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, you can achieve clear skin with Otesla. For psoriatic arthritis, Otesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Otesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. Otesla can cause serious allergic reactions. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. Puzzles are easy. Family, that's a real challenge. I think we're all going in the right direction. Then they twist the opposite way. I go out on my own and then they come around again. Happens rarely, but every once in a while, we all go where we're supposed to go. And everything clicks into place. Young Sheldon, weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Chevrolet. Come see what the Varney value is all about. And we are all about this, right? And soon, though, not quite yet. Uh, as the leaves begin to turn, you need cooler temperatures. And we're not getting that quite yet. In fact, check out these highs. 84 here in Bangor today. 80 Bar Harbor, 79 Millinocket. Uh, this is not normal. The average high being low 70s. It's going to get a bit cooler, though. In fact, 60s are in the five-day forecast. The overall trend, though, it still keeps us above average in temperatures through pretty much the end of September. So it's going to get a bit cooler around here, probably Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then right back up again uh, next weekend into next week. Looking outside now, there are some clouds out there. A couple of sprinkles earlier, not a big deal at all. Uh, overall, though, we'll have increasing clouds tonight, and there is a system over here, not really well put together, though. Uh, it's going to move our direction for tomorrow and give us a couple scattered showers. Now, nothing strong, nothing severe, uh, but no, there'll be a couple of showers out there tomorrow, pretty much at any given time throughout the day into early parts of tomorrow night. Let's walk you through it. So here's tonight. No worries. 
at all except for some dense fog is likely again tonight. Now here's tomorrow morning about 930 or so showing some light rain showers just beginning to get their act together uh, with clouds early tomorrow. And then throughout the day tomorrow we'll get a couple of waves of rain through here again. Nothing heavy, nothing severe, uh, but overall look for sprinkles and light rain showers tomorrow into tomorrow night ending early on Wednesday. Then a very nice day for us on Wednesday and a Thursday and probably Friday as well. Now rainfall looks like this, so this is not going to be a big soaker at all. But most of us, though, could see a quarter to a half inch of rainfall from this beginning early tomorrow morning and lingering through about this time tomorrow night. OK, so here's a drought monitor. Of course, off to the west has been decades of drought here, all sorts of issues for them. But for us, we've been watching, you know, level one, two and three drought conditions across the state pretty much all summer long, right? But we're slowly eating away at this as we keep getting more rainy systems in here and probably in the next couple of weeks or so, this may be completely gone across our neck of the woods. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is probably cloudy skies. Some dense fog is likely there could be a sprinkle in there. Look for low temperatures, not so low lows down near 60 for tomorrow. OK, so early morning fog followed by increasing clouds, followed by rain, and that rain will probably linger into tomorrow evening. High temperatures near 74. That could be a stretch, probably more like 71 or 72 through tomorrow afternoon. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast by Varney Chevrolet shows tomorrow we get wet. Wednesday we dry out 76, but then uh oh, what happens here? Well, a cold front is going to come through Wednesday night and Thursday, Friday temperatures hanging out in the 60s. Beth. Hmm. So beautiful looking end of the week weekend potentially heading yeah. our way. Just, you know, dialing the heat down just a scotch. Yeah, just a little bit. Not enough to make it uncomfortable, though. Right. I, I'm really OK with that five day outlook. Indeed. Like Indeed. All right. All right. Well, sports is coming up next with Dave Peck, so stay with us. Home isn't just about looks, it's how it makes you feel. Calm, or maybe even cozy. And now get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the difference at Jordan's. It's Ford Truck Month. Get after it in a Ford F-150 and take on the weekend. With an available tailgate work service to get the party started, and available pro power on board to keep it going strong. Get our best offers on Ford F-150. Get to Ford Truck Month. Now place your order and lock in 2.9% APR for 60 months plus $500 bonus cash on select Ford trucks. Nothing hits harder than this. Five Finger Death Punch. Under and over and Saturday, September 17th. Main Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine with Megadeth. And special guests, The Who. And Fire from the Gods. Well, I... On sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com. Five Finger Death Punch. New single, Afterlife, out now. Please join us for the second annual Kevin Call Jr. Truck and Tractor Pool, sponsored by Bangor Tractor. Located at the Penobscot Snowmobile Club in Herman, gates open at 8 a.m. on September 17th. Admission $10, children 12 and under are free. We will have full concessions and apparel for sale, as well as raffle tickets for your chance to win a 2023 Skidoo Renegade. Enjoy 10-plus classes of pulling, including trucks, tractors, and even semis. Brought to us by the Maine State Truck and Tractor Pullers Association. Visit Sled Herman on Facebook for more info. Need new furniture now but don't have a lot of money to spend? Come save at the Furniture Factory Outlet in every Jordan store and get up to 60 months no interest. Experience the style at Jordan's. Sunday's NFL coverage starts with Fox NFL kickoff at 11, then Fox NFL Sunday at noon. Loaded with talent. The best NFL pregame shows are only on Fox. Welcome back, everyone. Well, two games, two losses so far for Maine football, but overall a much more promising effort from the Black Bears in Saturday's 21-18 loss to Colgate. It didn't start very positive because for the entire first half, the Maine offense was still in search of its first score of the season. Defensively, though, the Black Hole kept the game tight, giving up just one touchdown in the first two quarters. A significant improvement from week one at New Mexico. We're more physical, uh, you know, and that was a big emphasis for us is the, and that's what we want to be known as, as a football program is, is being a physical team. And, uh, and we showed that and we showed that we can do that. Um, still a lot of things to clean up, but, you know, I thought the, the players 
were really sound in their assignments and knowing where they need to be. And um, it, it comes to getting off the field too. Now, if we're looking glass half full, the most promising takeaway from Saturday was the late push. Maine scored 15 points in the fourth quarter alone, losing by just three after a missed field goal from a little bit beyond 40 yards. But Steven said that's the heart they're going to need, and it started with quarterback Joe Fagnano. We're going to lean on him, and you know, and he's going to be the one to, to lead us. So, And you saw him. He was. We had a fourth and four. We were backed up in our own territory in two-man drill, and he dove for a first down. So... You know, those are the plays we can point to as how we need to play, um, the type of heart we need to play with, and, and Joe's certainly leading the way with that. So the Black Bears will face Boston College this coming Saturday in, for, in, in search of their first win, I should say. But if you were a Maine fan looking for some better news on Sunday, your football weekend probably didn't get much better with the Patriots. The good news, of course, is that football is football, and the Pats were finally in action versus Miami. The bad news... They didn't look very good at all. Losing at Hard Rock Stadium for the third straight year, 20-7 to the score. The offense struggled throughout, but really it was two big plays that changed the entire game. In the second quarter, Brandon Jones came scot-free off the edge, forcing a fumble and an eventual touchdown. Then, late in the half, Jalen Waddle caught a touchdown pass on a fourth down conversion from Tua Tungavaloa. Now, according to Ian Rappaport, Mac Jones was dealing with back spasms that sent him to get x-rays after the game, though the results did come back negative. Yeah, I want to be able to be ready to play against Pittsburgh, and I feel good. But you know, yesterday, just talking with the trainers, uh, just try to get back. Um, wasn't feeling too hot after the game, but definitely feel a lot better. I know everybody's hungry for an up-to-the-second update, but honestly, the best way to handle these situations is always to give it a little time, see what happens, run whatever tests or analysis need to be run, and then go from there. So the Pats will travel to Pittsburgh this week to take on the Steelers at 1 p.m. on Sunday. For now, let's head to the high school circuit and get to some field hockey action from Monday. John Baps hosting Old Town here at the Union Street Fields. Really tight game in the first half here. Not a lot of offense. Karma Rigari with the shot kick save from Kate Griffin. And that kept it scoreless. Second half, though, the Coyotes break through. Grace Willie delivers the cross. Kaylee Wagner finishes it off. 1-0 Old Town on top. And then just a couple minutes later, Natalie Fournier here. Nifty backhand flip on net. Griffin with the initial save, but Willie is there on the rebound as Old Town goes on to take it. 2-0 is the final. And here's a look at some of the other action from around the state on Monday. Staying with field hockey, it's Dexter over Foxcroft 3-0. Then another blank. Herman takes down Orono 2-0. And in Class C girls soccer, it's 3-1 Bucksport over Central. And Skank defeats Lee 4 to 2. And finally, for those who haven't heard, this will be my last day at ABC7 and Fox 22. It's been truly a dream come true to start my career in Bangor. So many great people who really care for their local teams, and that's what made covering Eastern and Northern Maine so enjoyable for the last couple of years. I want to thank everyone who's helped make our jobs possible, from the athletic directors in the area, athletes, coaches, everyone working behind the scenes in production, co-workers who have continuously made us look better than we actually are out here. As for what's next, I've accepted a job in my home state of Connecticut, but you'll be in good hands with Tyler Cruz taking over as sports director from here on out. So for the last time I say, already that sports and thank you. We'll be right back. $7.8 million. That's how much I made home sellers in the past two years. Planning on selling? I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one, gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. Fall into amazing savings during Flex Deals Fall Factory Authorized Sale. Rake in serious deals on all styles and models. Choose from our huge selection of fabric and leather, reclining and stationary furniture, including Flex Deals Latitude, South Haven, and Wynwood collections, and all crafted with Flex Deals exclusive lifetime warranted Blue Seal Spring. Prices are falling, so hurry in today for cool savings. Fall in love at Flex Deals Factory Authorized Sale. 
Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden. Live beautifully, my friends. We're a AAA family. We found out about AAA insurance um, through a friend who had actually mentioned it a while ago. We ran the numbers and it totally worked. We looked at the statement for our previous insurer and then AAA insurance. Definitely, we've seen a huge difference. Switch to AAA insurance today and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. By switching over to AAA insurance, we saved over $450. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> In his world. <laughs> Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did yeah, it take so long? We're a AAA family now. AAA insurance it allows us to do so much more with our kids and spend more time with them. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-209-5197 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Sometimes big truck accidents can result in big case settlements. These are just some of the big case results I fought to get my clients. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground round. Odland Road, Bangor. When selling your home, knowing your options could make you tens of thousands of dollars. That's what I do for my clients. I'm Holly Taylor. Come to the one who gets it done. HollyTaylor.Realtor. Hey, I'm Jerry O'Connell. Join me this fall right here on Fox 22 at 10 a.m. for Pictionary. Welcome back. DVD, digital, and music releases this week include The King of Rock and Roll, A Space Ranger, An Orphan Girl, and a Grammy-winning country band. Here's Fox's Ashley Dvorkin with the list of new releases. I'm ready. Ready to fly. Topping this week's list of what's new in home entertainment, Baz Luhrmann's musical biopic Elvis starring Austin Butler as the king of rock and roll. The film tells the life story of the late legendary singer through the lens of his complicated relationship with his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks. Ready, Captain Lightyear? Ready as I'll ever be. Chris Evans is the voice of the space ranger in Disney's sci-fi action adventure Lightyear. It explores the fictional origin story of the hero who inspired the toy in Toy Story films. Sometimes. I feel so invisible. The book-to-screen adaptation Where the Crawdads Sing stars Daisy Edgar Jones as an orphaned girl in the marshes of North Carolina who becomes the main suspect in the murder of a man she was once involved with. Face it, David, we're lost. In the suspense-filled drama The Forgiven, Jessica Chastain and Ray Fiennes play a wealthy, unhappy married couple who accidentally hit and kill a young Moroccan man on the way to a desert party. We have been dreaming about a place like this for a while now. Emma Roberts stars in the horror film Abandoned about a couple who move to the country with their baby son and discover their new home has a violent past. Fasten your key. Small screen favorites to own Cobra Kai Season 4 centers on Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang Dojos joining forces to take down Cobra Kai at the All-Valley Tournament. And season one of HBO's White Lotus follows a week in the life of a group of vacationers and employees at a tropical resort. Can't get you off my mind. For music fans, Grammy-winning country band Little Big Town released their new album, Mr. Sun. Hell yeah, I'm dancing under the in Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. Well, bad news for film fanatics. What started off as a blockbuster summer movie season ended a little flat. That's according to new data collected by media analytics company Comscore. From the first Friday in May through Labor Day, researchers say Hollywood films earned $3.43 billion across North American theaters. But that's 21 percent less than what they grossed for the 2019 summer season, making it the lowest earnings since 2001. Now, the reason for the decline, officials say studios didn't put out as many films with previous pandemic restrictions delaying studio release dates. Comscore says 22 movies were released this summer compared to the 42 flicks released in the summer of 2019. 
Now that Britain's Queen Elizabeth II has passed, how long will currency with her image still le be legally usable? While her new currency, while new currency with the image of the new British King Charles III will be produced following a period of mourning, the Bank of England says current banknotes featuring Queen Elizabeth will still continue to be legal tender, with the Royal Mint saying coins with her image will also still remain in use. There are about 47 billion UK banknotes worth 85 billion in circulation, as well as 29 billion coins. Coin experts say the Queen will remain in circulation for years to come. Meanwhile, other countries with currency featuring the Queen, including include Canada, Australia and more. Officials say updates to their currency to feature the new monarch will also be made, but those changes could take longer. Well, just like here in the U.S., younger generations in Japan are also tossing aside drinks rather than tossing them down the hatch. And businesses, well, they're adjusting. Alcoholic drinks are becoming less a must-do in Japan for millennials and members of Generation Z, with many opting for no or low alcoholic drinks for health reasons. Worldwide, research company IWSR reports the market value for these consumers rose to roughly $10 billion last year from under $8 billion back in 2018. And as the trend continues taking off, bars like the ones in Japan are expanding their selection by creating non-alcohol beer gardens, offering mocktails and serving non-alcoholic wine as well. The changes are all allowing drinkers and non-drinkers to share the same social atmosphere. Well, it's time to get your game on and celebrate with Monday marking National Video Games Day. The date is observed annually on September 12th to celebrate the history and popularity of video games on, of all types. One of the first video games dates back to 1940, where a man named Edward Condon created an electromechanical machine in which people played a game called NIM. Since then, the gaming industry has evolved with consoles from Nintendo's Game Boy to the Xbox and beyond, growing to become a massive industry worth more than $190 billion last year alone. If you want to show your love, you can snap some photos of yourself playing your favorites and share them on social media using the hashtag National Video Games Day. Wow. Mm. Lots of games uh, going on, yeah. but uh, Dave, uh, you've been covering your last ones today. How does it feel to be yeah. I, <laughs> It's hard on. to describe, honestly. I've only been here two years, which doesn't seem like that long. It honestly went by very quickly, yeah. um, covering everything from you know, main athletics to high school to yeah. community events. And yeah. it's just the, the one thing I said, and I said it before, it just... I don't know if you find a sports community as passionate, as close-knit as the one mm. that's in this area. And that's what makes it so special. Yeah. Like you, Whatever game you go to, whether you're talking with the players or the coaches, you, you know people. You see people, whether it's other members of the media or just community members. And that was awesome, like getting to talk to them about their family or, you know, chit-chatting about this, that, and the other. I mean, it was fantastic. So I will definitely miss that. And I do want to thank you guys for, yeah. you know, being such a pleasure to work with and spend so much fun, you know, on air and off, of course. Yeah. I'm going to miss your features so much. <laughs> you had such a wonderful wit with your feature storytelling and all of your mm. special segments with us ranking the Thanksgiving yes. sides. Yes, I'll never we'll always, that. We'll <laughs> always remember that. So yes. just such a pleasure to work with you. We're going to miss you. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate absolutely. It. I want to yeah, just repeat that and also... Yeah. Uh, a new hot dog champion eating contest champion. Yes, have to be crowned next year. It can't be you. You now. might have to participate. I may just have spot. to step oh, up. Lord. In your honor, I will, Dave. Thank All right, you, well, guys. You've been so warned, folks. <laughs>
It was a big yes or a big no button. I clicked that's not me and LifeLock took it from there. If you are a victim of identity theft, I